Okay, so in this video, we're going to continue on with our series on doubly linked lists. And we want to solve the following problem in this video using a doubly linked list data structure. And that problem is defined as pairs with sum. So the general description of the problem is we want to, given a sum value, go through and determine what pairs present in the doubly linked list will sum to the specified sum value. So for instance, if we have a doubly linked list object like this with elements one, two, three, four, and five, and let's say that we want the sum value to be five, then we need to find the pairs that we can form from this list such that the sum is equal to the sum that we specify, in this case, five. So for instance, there's two pairs in this list that will give us five two and three, so we can pair those together, and also one along with four will give us five. So we want to use this doubly linked list structure to figure out if there's a way that we can determine all of the pairs such that they will sum to the sum value as given by this prototype function here. So let's actually step through, let's just uh, step through this problem kind of by hand since it's a relatively small case, and I think it will help to figure out how to actually solve it more generally. So the first step is really how do we construct the pairs of numbers from a doubly linked list. So one way we can do that is we can start off by looking at the head node. So the first one is 1. So let's make all the pairs that we can with starting with the, the head node, starting with this case, the number 1. So we have 1 and 2. So we're not going to self, we're not going to double count. So we're not going to include 1 again. So it's going to be 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, and also 1, 5. Okay, so moving right along now, so we've covered this first node. Now let's consider all the pairs that we can make with 2. So we could also make, for instance, 2, 1, but notice that 2 plus 1 and 1 plus 2 is the same. So we're actually going to start forming pairs after this node. So for instance, the first pair that will actually form from the second one onward is 2, 3, 2, 4, and 2, 5. So similarly, we're going to have a similar pattern here. Let's move on to 3. So again, we don't care about 3, 1, or 3, 2, because both of those pairs are already counted for in 3, 2, and 1, 3. So we already have those. Since we only care about addition sum, it's going to be the same whether it's 3, 1, or 1, 3, or 2, 3, or 3, 2. So the pairs that we can form that are unique are going to be 3, 4, and 3, 5. Again, going on, we have 4, 5, and that will do it. So these are the valid pairs of elements that we can go through. And then what we want to do once we form the pairs is we want to figure out which one of these pairs or how many of these pairs sum such that they equal the sum value specified in the function prototype, in the argument section. So let's go ahead and try to figure out how to do that. So we're going to follow a very similar structure to what we did by while we formed these pairs here. So for instance, we'll keep them stored in a list. So let's go ahead and declare an empty list, which we'll call pairs, and we'll just declare that as an empty list there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have two pointers that go through the list. So the first pointer starts off at the head node, and then the second pointer goes through all of the remaining nodes. And that's how we get the 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5. And then once we reach the end of the list, the P pointer starts off now at the second node. And then the Q pointer goes from the next node onward all the way to the end of the list. So likewise, when we reach the end of the list, P increments to the next node, and then Q goes to the next one and goes all the way to the end of the list. So that's why we need these two pointers. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's create a pointer called P, which will init initially be equal to the head of the list. And then we'll have another pointer, Q, which will initially be equal to none. And so what we're first going to do is we're going to say while P, that is while P is not null, we're going to set Q is equal to the P.next. So we, we have P initially set to this value here. This is the head of the list. And what we want to do is we want to say Q should start at the next one and then go down every single following node until it reaches the end of the list. So what we'll do here inside of this loop is we'll say Q is equal to P.next p.next, and then we'll say while q, so again, we'll start off q here, and then we'll keep going until we reach the end of the list. So while q is not null, we'll check uh, if p.data plus q.data, if this is equal to the sum value that we pass in, 
And then what we want to do is we want to add that pair to our list because that's going to be one of the valid pairs such that P and Q sum to the sum value as specified in the function. So what we'll do here is we'll say pairs dot append and we'll say let's just write this kind of as a string. So we'll write this as an actual pair. So open parenthesis plus the string of P dot data plus comma just to separate them plus the string value of Q dot data. Uh, again, another parenthesis to close and then a parenthesis to close the append statement. So we're going to append that pair because that pair was found to be a valid pair in that it's sum to the sum value. And then what we're going to do there is we're just going to, if we don't hit that um, P dot data plus Q dot data equal the sum value. In any case, what we'll do is we'll progress the Q pointer onto the next element in the list. So we'll say Q is equal to Q dot next. And likewise, we'll also need to do that for P. So once we're outside of the uh, Q while loop, what we'll do is we'll say P is equal to P dot next. And then at the end of this, we should have a pairs list, which consists of all the pairs that sum to the specified value. So what we can do there is we can return pairs. So let's go ahead and make sure this works. So again, remember that when we consider this example for the sum value of five, the two pairs that we know to sum to the value of five are two and three, and then also one and four. So let's go ahead and write this and then make sure that this works. We're gonna clear the screen just to have a clear output there. So let's go ahead and run it and see what we get. So let's see, I didn't print out the pairs, so I need to put a print statement around this so we can actually see the pairs that are returned. Let's try that again. So indeed, we see that the pairs that are returned back for the sum value of five is one plus four and two plus three. Let's go ahead and try to do this for a sum value that's not achieved. So for instance, we don't ever get the sum of zero in this list. There's no way to add any pair of these elements to get zero. So let's see what happens when we get that. So we'll print out doubly linked list dot, uh, what, what do we call this function? Pairs with sum, pairs with sum of zero. So let's go ahead and see that. Let's delete that first one and see what we get there. Also delete this print statement because we don't need to print the list. So write that and then give it a run. So we get an empty list because there's no such pairs in this doubly linked list such that the sum will equal zero. So that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them in the description below. As always, the code for all these videos will be available on my GitHub page, and the link to that will be in the description below as well. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day. Bye.